and everybody in India now idolizing this person as a youth icon and hero. So ISS is International Space Station. It's a satellite or a spacecraft which is floating or orbiting at the height of 400 km around the Earth. Now you know the destination is ISS. The rocket is Falcon 9, but rockets are meant for satellites. Seed performance and productivity in microgravity. How seed is going to perform in microgravity, how this is going to sprout in microgravity. So that was the brief but important aspect of Axiom 4. Hello and welcome. I'm Ritesh Sharjaswal and welcome to PW Only IS. So on your screen you can see two faces. One is mine and another is Subhanshu Shukla. The Subhanshu Shukla. And everybody in India now idolizing this person as a youth icon and hero. Because he is the first Indian who traveled to ISS, International Space Station. And he became the second Indian in the entire history of India to travel to the space after 1984's journey of Rakesh Sharma, right? So today in this lecture, we are going to talk about the mission Axiom 4 and the heroic journey of, the splendid journey of Subhanshu Shukla, right? So Subhanshu Shukla, Lucknow born, 1985 born, Air Force pilot who has been previously selected for Gaganyan crew, got opportunity to represent India in Axiom 4 mission, that's a private mission to the ISS and he was representing India and ISRO and he did lots of microgravity experiments in ISS that will pave new door and new road to Indian space sector and in Indian ability in a space area, right? So the first thing, what is Axiom 4? Axiom 4 is a private space mission where Axiom and NASA and SpaceX collaborated together and then four astronaut, they were traveling to ISS. One of the astronaut is Shubhanshu Shukla. One of the astronaut who went there at ISS is Subhanshu Shukla. So June 25, 2025, Subhanshu Shukla traveled to the ISS and July 15, he came back. He has spent 18 days in ISS. He did a lot of experiments in microgravity, right? So we'll talk in detail. So first thing first, what is ISS? And why it is so interesting to go there? Because every time when somebody goes to ISS, it makes international news. You must be uh, having memory of Sunita Williams trapped at ISS for many months and then it was news all over. So ISS is International Space Station. It's a satellite or a spacecraft which is floating or orbiting at the height of 400 km around the earth. This is habitable place for space travelers or astronauts and every time there are, I mean half dozen, around 8 to 10 astronauts which are there inside and they do microgravity experiments of different types. This ISS is international collaboration and many countries have collaborated like NASA of USA, Roscosmos of Russia, European Space Agency of Europe, JAXA of Japan, Canadian Space Agency of Canada. Obviously, India is not part of it. India just traveled to that through Shubhanshu Shukla, right? And this is a scientific, you know, laboratory in the space to conduct different kind of space or microgravity based experimentation and to understand something more about the space, right? So that is what the ISS and it was the very first time when somebody from India has traveled to ISS, although previously, I mean, many a times Sunita Williams, who is astronaut, American astronaut of Indian origin has traveled to this place. Now, if you want to go 400 kilometer up in the space by a rocket, then your rocket must be reliable one. Obviously, with the rocket only you will go there. So now in this Axiom 4 mission, the rocket and the other technical supply was from SpaceX. So there, a very powerful rocket and very unique rocket, Falcon 9 has been used and that is made by SpaceX. So this rocket that you can see is Falcon 9 developed by SpaceX and this rocket is very unique in its own way. Why it is unique? So manufacturer is SpaceX, first launch was in 2010 and this is a two-stage rocket. 
So stage one and stage two. And the most important thing, the first stage of this rocket can be reused. So this is reusable first stage, right? And it's like if you get the first stage, you can reuse it again and again. And that is basically towards sustainable space exploration. And it's a very good technology. It will save lots of technology efforts, fuel manufacturing and all kind of thing. It can carry payload up to 22,800 kilogram in LEO. That is around 400, 500 kilometers. And if you go to GTO, that is around 35, 36,000 kilometer, then it can carry up to 8,300 kilogram. Mighty one. India don't have any such rocket till now. The mightiest we have is uh, that LVM3, which can carry four ton to this GTO. Fuel this rocket is using is refined kerosene and liquid oxygen. And that is semi cryogenic engine, very efficient and very good engine. It's a green technology also, which pollute less into the environment, right? And reusability of the first stage is a very unique thing because it's a first orbital class rocket to be reused multiple times, right? And SpaceX have used this Falcon 9 rocket for many a time. You know that SpaceX is also having satellite based internet service that is called a Starlink. And they have launched a Starlink satellite with this. They have launched Crew Dragon. I'll talk about Crew Dragon just now and Exum mission before, right? And the most significant part of this that it can reduce launch costs, launch costs. It is reliable, reusable, and it is also sustainable in a way, right? So now you know that destination is ISS. The rocket is Falcon 9, but rockets are meant for satellites. Satellites are non-living objects. You can put these satellites into the rocket and you launch it. But when you are going to launch human being into a space or ISS, you need to put the human being in a particular way so that it's not life threatening for them. And for that, at the upper part of this rocket, you will have something that is called crew dragon. That is called crew dragon. This is a capsule. The screen, you can see, this is a capsule and this capsule is called crew dragon. Now, this is a very robust uh, part which sit atop the Falcon 9 rocket. In this crew dragon, up to seven astronauts can be there, right? This crew dragon will have two components. One is service module, another is crew module. Crew module will be habitable place. Service module will have all the equipments that is necessary to, you know, move this crew uh, dragon or capsule from one place to the other place. So when the rocket gets launched, it will carry the crew dragon and at one point of time, rocket will cover its distance and crew dragon will detach. After detachment of the crew dragon, what will happen? Now, the astronaut in this crew dragon will be able to navigate through the space and this will dock, this will attach to the ISS. So crew dragon, that capsule will attach to this ISS and now the astronauts will come out of the capsule that crew dragon and they will enter into the habitable space of ISS. You get my point? And I'll tell you one thing, right? Mission pilot of this Exium 4 were, uh, was our very own Shubhanshu Shukla only. So he was a pilot who was responsible for all this uh, journey. He was playing major role into that, right? Docking and everything. And then not only that, once he reached to ISS, he conducted lots many experiments. He conducted so many of experiments there. And there has been more than 60 experiment of around 30 different countries. These four astronauts have been conducting and Subhanshu Shukla was playing some important role in it. But then in this mission, ISRO also conducted six, sorry, seven cutting edge experiments through Subhanshu Shukla. So that's a very significant, significant part of this mission that seven experiments has been conducted on ISS in microgravity condition that was backed by ISRO, that was technically backed by ISRO. So we'll talk about that seven experiments too in a very brief manner. So these are the seven experiments that you can see. The experiment number one was microalgae growth, right? And Department of Biotechnology was the major uh, force behind it. And microalgae growth, that means how microalgae is growing in microgravity condition. And this is all about sustainable food and air recycling system. 
right? The objective was that in a space, can we have sustainable food and a recycling system so that in future, if we set up our own space station, that is Bharti Antrik station, then we can use this information in that way. The second is sprouting seeds of methi and moong, right? And that is Dharwar and IIT Dharwar. They have promoted it through ISRO and that will also explore the possibility of a space farming and nutrition research. How ingenious is that? Then there is something called tardigrade. So tardigrade is a very resilient animal, right? Which doesn't die, even in a space doesn't die. So what kind of resilient and resilience it has that we wanted to study. So extreme survival capacity and molecular adaptability of this animal, which are microscopic in nature, that has been explored in that experiment and data has been collected. Muscle regeneration in a stem, related to a stem cell. So how muscles can regenerate to combat muscle atrophy using supplements that has been conducted in microgravity conditions, which will help medical science and stem cell research. Display interaction, right? Optimizing astronaut interface and perform under weightlessness. How they can, you know, perform in a weightless condition, how they can communicate through the interfaces. This all technical aspects have been experimented over there and Sundhanshu Shukla played very important role in that. Cyanobacteria behavior, that is blue-green algae. It's a bacteria-like structure who does photosynthesis and then Department of Biotechnology and it will help in bioprocessing system for oxygen nutrient via urea and nitrate effect. So it is similar to the sustainable food and all because there it's normal algae, this is blue-green algae, this is eukaryotic, this is prokaryotic but the purpose remains almost same. And crop seed variability, so there agriculture universities of India has promoted this and there what we are going to study, what we have studied, that we studied seed performance and productivity in microgravity. How seed is going to perform in microgravity, how this is going to sprout in microgravity that we have talked about and experimented about. So these were the seven experiments that has been conducted on, right, ISS by Shubhanshu Shukla and this is very important because all these experiments are related to nutrition, agriculture, human health and advanced technology. This will also open the door and possibility in all this sector and it will empower India for the next Gaganyaan and other space mission, right? But at the same time, we know that Sudhanshu, uh, Subhanshu Shukla, the first Indian who reached to the ISS, second Indian to the space, what kind of benefit? This achievement will give to India. 1984, Rakesh Sharma from Indian Air Force, he was there. And 2025, after many years and decades, now the things has been repeated, rather it is upgraded. He has spent 18 days in a space on ISS. So what kind of benefit India will get? So I have enlisted this benefits domain. So in science and research and development, this Mission Exome 4 will give India benefit in space biology, medicine, farming, right, and microgravity experimentation. Got it? It will also help to prepare India into Gaganyaan mission. So Gaganyaan mission is very important for India. India is all set to go for it and this will help in that. So like I told you, Subhanshu Shukla was selected for Gaganyaan mission and he was already going under training in Russia, right? So this will also help in that. So it will prepare ISRO for the crew mission and the first totally Indian mission. Exome 4, India has only sent the astronaut. India was not part of this mission as a technical partner, right? Technology, instruments, mission readiness, telemetry, international operations will all now we know about in a practical way, right? So we can use it in a more reliable way. We have got the confidence of it. Diplomacy, because obviously this Exome space and uh, USA and Europe, we all came together and then a strategic cooperation has been promoted. So India has earned a lot of soft power out of it, right? Education, it will also boost space awareness all across because lots of talks has been happening. And then it will also put Indian academia into that STEM, right? So in that way, it will help India, right? And a startup 
an economy, right? So it will encourage a space biotech, a space startup, and commercial payloads launching in India. So that is more than just an space mission. It is a kind of, you know, capacity builder for ISRO and India, right? So that was the brief but important aspect of Axiom 4 and all the component of it. I hope you liked it. If you want to know something more about this or anything else, please comment in the comment section and we'll get back to you. Thank you. Thanks a lot.